thank you for joining us today. We're going to talk about Colombian coffee, what I would call the old reliable. Delicious. What is going on with Colombia that I should know about? Well, I mean, a lot of good things are have always happened with coffee in Colombia. I mean, it's a, of course, it's the world's biggest supplier of uh, high-grown coffee of the category called mild coffee, wet processed, clean, uh, bright kind of coffee. That Colombia some <clears throat> decades ago decided to make the entire country into uh, a single uh, statement of coffee, a, a style, a cup profile of coffee, the entire con country. And this is done uh, through a uh, quasi-government uh, uh, association called, Colum usually we call it Colombian Coffee Federation. It, this is very difficult to do. You have all these farmers, most farmers in Colombia are like classic family farmers, the way we used to think of them in the United States in the 1950s. You know, a family uh, uh, with uh, 20 acres or equivalent, something like that, and uh, processing the coffee, removing the fruit residue from the beans themselves. So to get uniformity in a, in a vast country with a very complex typography, was uh, pretty amazing, and they, they sort of did it. And then they uh, marketed it, of course, as 100% Colombian, and uh, hired a Madison Avenue agency, put out a brilliant campaign for many years with Juan Valdez and his donkey, selling that uh, <coughs> the coffee, the richest coffee in the world, etc. Very successful in the very positive for all those growers involved. It, I think there are about 216,000, last time I checked. Of course, the other producers who are not part of the Federation benefited also from this campaign. The issue in terms of specialty coffee, coffee that's sold on the basis of its being different, the way different wine varieties are different, is that Colombia, they did their best, the Federation did its best to make all of those cups of coffee produced from all of those farmers taste pretty much the same. And a good cup, and it's a cup, and it made a tremendous, I think, uh, impression on, in the United States in particular. It was so reliable. And, uh, but of course, from a, a specialty coffee perspective, uh, wasn't so positive when specialty coffee really got rolling because people were doing different things with their coffee starting in about 2015. The, there's a popularity of, of uh, doing, preparing the coffee or, or uh, removing the fruit and drying it in a different way. So we had what we call naturals or coffee that's dried in the whole fruit. And the, the Colombian Coffee Federation and the government uh, basically outlawed that practice. I mean, they wouldn't allow coffee to, re to leave Colombia under their programs as uh, Colombian coffee. So uh, put it kind of squelched Colombia growers. They were sort of stuck doing the same thing and uh, trying to do it maybe a little better, but they got no, maybe uh, only a small reward for doing it better. And so the, uh, in 2015, the, the government relented and took the lid off and allowed producers, uh, as individual producers and exporters, to do different things with the coffee. Since then, there's been an explosion of uh, splendid and unique coffees from Colombia. So I think what, what we need to keep in mind when we're talking about Colombia coffee and tasting them today is that we're likely to have two dimensions of coffee. One dimension is the traditional Colombian dimension. 
hopefully we'll have some superb and perfect, clean, uh, bright, uh, delicious uh, examples of those. And we may have some ordinary kinds that are still good. I mean, the, let me just say that on the supermarket shelves, if you buy a can of coffee and it's 100% Colombian, you are 100% better than all the blends that are offered in cans in the supermarket. So that's one extreme. It's already a very excellent, but it's ordinary. And then we have Colombian producers who are experimenting now brilliantly with other ways of getting other pro coffee profiles. So today, the test for me is going to be distinguishing, <laughs> hopefully, between the uh, ordinary Columbia cup, which is still good, uh, a brilliant traditional Columbia cup, and these uh, experimental or alternative Columbia cups, which I will be baffled by, I'm sure. That was an excellent explanation, because to me, as a, just as someone who got into coffee, and just because I love coffee, the reason I use the phrase the old reliable, 100% Colombian was like code word for me of 100% Arabica. I, I, am I right? There, there yeah, are no Robusta yeah. coffees no, the, grown no, in Colombia. No Robusta is allowed to be grown in Colombia. I used to think I knew what Colombian coffees tasted like, and sometimes they don't taste the same way. It's not that they're bad coffees, they could be great coffees, but they're, they're, they're different notes that I didn't even realize were right. possible in Colombia. Now, uh, I should say, within, within the category of 100% Colombian, controlled by the Colombian Federation and graded, and et cetera, there have been changes that have been controversial. Right now, a 100% Colombian coffee would be from one of two coffee varieties. Katura, which is a traditional Colombian variety uh, from, I mean, first uh, selected maybe 40 or 50 years ago, and Castillo. Castillo is a hybrid variety that has some robusta genetics in it in order to make it uh, rust resistant, disease resistant, and, uh, and more uh, flexible in terms of, uh, of uh, growing conditions. But nevertheless, they taste very, very similar. The, <laughs> uh, the, the, old, the, the traditionalists in the coffee world, of course, attacked bitterly the uh, Castillo but uh, the Colombian breeders were so skillful that it's, uh, it's a test, of, a massive test was done, actually. <laughs> and uh, the uh, American coffee buyers uh, couldn't really consistently distinguish. So that's the variety. And then the processing method is the washed method, of course, where you remove the coffee uh, fruit residue before you dry the beans because the fruit residue, of course, that dries on the beans influences the taste profoundly. And the Colombian uh, Federation also introduced a new way, a uh, shortcut way of removing the fruit using machines rather than a, a step called ferment where the coffee is fermented and the fruit is loosened and is washed. So that was controversial. Nevertheless, uh, those two transitions, I think, uh, well, of the two, I think the processing method change, changed the Colombian cup, in my view. So a lot of the specialty coffees, though, are done in the traditional way. Well, should we, uh, let's should taste we cup one. some? Let's taste one.